Hi guys, welcome back. As you can probably see, the Anschutz is missing a few parts at the moment. The air cylinder's sprung a leak. I'm just about to reseal that. So at the moment, while I'm waiting for the O-rings for that, I thought it's time to convert over from dovetail rail to picatinny. Now, over the years, most of my target rifles have always had traditional dovetails on them of varying sizes, sort of 11 mil on the majority of the English and European guns. And the BSAs have had their slightly oversized 13 mil rail, but... I've recently come across this. So this is a UTG slash Leapers Picatinny rail adapter. Now this adapts from dovetail to Picatinny. Now where I share a few different scopes between different rifles and certainly with my modern rifles like the Catran and things having a Picatinny rail as standard, it's becoming far more obvious that the dovetail is just a pain in the backside really. Having to swap the mounts is quite time consuming but once you've got a pick rail on there, if you're careful with how you space your mounts, I should be able to just swap this from one gun to the other just by simply loosening off the four nuts on the side there and job done. So this came from Optics Warehouse and it was £16. Now, I'm not quite sure how they can make it for that sort of money. It's obviously made in China, but the quality of this is surprisingly robust. It comes with twin bolts either side. Now, essentially, all you do with these, should you need to splay open the clamp, is just a quarter turn at a time, pinch these together and it will splay this midsection apart. Now, offered up to the Anschutz, it's actually already slightly looser than it needs to be. So all I need to do is whip out these bolts in the side here. So once they're removed, you've got an M5 hole here. This is just grease, I've already pre-lubed this. And then these longer bolts, these are M4s as well. So unlike the BKLs, which use a AF type size, these are all metric, so that simply is unscrewed out of that side. You pop it through to the other side, and you can see there's a little counterboard section here to recess the head marginally. And that just goes in the other side like that. And now we can use it as a traditional scope mount. It also comes, if you've got a springer, there's also provision, it actually comes with them, I've removed them already, but there's some recoil pins here as well, but I certainly don't want to be digging those down into the scope rail, so. Right, let's just swap all of these over quick. I'll put just a little bit of grease on these. Because of the way these work, you've got a steel bolt into the alley mount itself, so a small bit of lubricant's a wise idea. You've got a nice Torx head on there as well, so it comes with all of the bits that you need. It's got a little Torx wrench. You've got the correct size Allen keys for all the fixings on there as well, which makes it even better value for money. The best thing to do with these is to tension them up a quarter a turn at a time off of the rifle until it won't quite fit onto your dovetail rail and then back off these screws until you've got a nice friction fit. Now having offered this up already and compared it to the Catran I need to overhang this rear mount slightly off of the back of the block. The shape of this works perfectly that's going to end up sitting here and because of the different length of pulls on the rifles that's going to work out beautifully but this front section here overhanging the loading port is going to get in the way a little bit so the next thing i'm going to do is just literally cut off this forward inch here so i'll quickly go and cut that off now right so i've just trimmed the end off of there i'll probably cover it over with a bit of sharpie pen i'm not too worried really right when you tighten these up you need to be very careful that you do sort of a quarter of a turn at a time and make sure you've got nice even clamping pressure on there they do specify some torque ratings in the instructions for these. Using a short Allen key like this, I'm going to nip it up fairly tight, then hang off of it and make sure it doesn't move. So I'll do that now. Right, that feels pretty solid on there. So I'm going to mount the scope up quickly. What I'll do is I'll zero this up, take the scope back off, refit it again, and we'll see how close it comes back to its original zero. It'll be interesting to find out just how accurate these mounts are. These are just a cheap West Hunter one that I got off of Amazon a while back when I wasn't entirely sure on the scope height that I wanted, but I have been quite pleased with those, to be honest, as well. Certainly a bit cheaper than the stuff that I would normally be running, but I think nowadays a lot of this Chinese-made stuff is of reasonable quality, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and spend the money of tier ones. We all want tier one stuff, don't get me wrong, but... If you've got to stick to a bit more of a budget, then there's certainly some more affordable options nowadays that have a fair degree of quality to them. So we'll get this mounted and I'll get back to you when the gun's all together and we'll get it zeroed and see how it goes. 
Right, the scope's now mounted, the new Picatinny rail's on here, it's all lightly nipped up, ready to test. So I'm, all I'm going to do is quickly run out a few cards, bring it on to zero, and then we'll remove the scope, refit it again, and then we'll see how close and how repeatable it is, whether or not it comes back to its original zero position. So I'll see you at the farm. Right, we're here. Unfortunately, it's quite windy. I've tucked you back out of the way a little bit, but there's actually quite a strong tailwind. We're at 25 yards. I've just quickly, on a separate card, brought this back to zero. So I'm gonna quickly go and just shoot a few on the left side of this card. I've got a couple of crosshairs. We'll just establish a zero on there and do a little group. What we'll then do is remove the scope. I'll go and grab a cup of tea. We'll refit the scope, and then we'll see on the right-hand card how far away it is from its initial zero point and then we can see just how consistent the mounts are. Considering that they're budget mounts, I don't know what to expect really, but we'll find out, I guess. Well, I'm just using that little mini tin of Air Arms Diablo fields that you've seen me using before. So these work quite well in this barrel. It's a shame it's quite so windy. Okay, so that landed just a little bit to the left of the actual crosshairs on the target. Oh, that one went up a little bit high and left. I felt that wind whistling around my ear holes. So they're coming in slightly left of the actual crosshairs, but the position of the pellet strikes relative to the crosses is not really what we're looking at at the moment. We'll get a judge with these, and then once we've refitted that scope, we'll see just whether it's consistent in the return of them shots after the scope's been back on again. Right, that do for the moment. I'll run you straight down and I'll show you what we've got. So this is just as a zero check, and then we can compare once that scope's been remounted again. Right, so little group, nine mil maybe. These ones here, the wind was picking up here, but now we've got a good idea from this card. When we refit the scope, we'd expect that the pellets to land in much the same place as this, if it's nice and consistent. If there's any poor tolerances in the way that that scope mounts, we may find that they wander off a little bit more. So we'll soon find out. Right, I'm gonna grab a cup of tea and I'll be back for you in a bit. It certainly makes life easier just being able to whip the scope on and off like that. Right, let's see how this goes then. So the scope's been off, it's remounted again. And we'll have a go on that right hand target of the two and see whether or not it's anywhere near the first zero point. Huh, okay. Well, that's almost exactly in the same position as the first shot of the first group that I shot so that's interesting considering that these are pretty much the most basic budget mounts that you can get that I found that looked of reasonable quality that's quite surprising hopefully it doesn't wander off and do anything mental we've still got quite a strong tailwind it's really whipping up now behind me got a draft right up my back Right, it's almost in exactly the same position as that first group was. Well, looking through the scope at them groups, it's impossible to tell that there's any real difference. And it certainly it's hard to tell that the scope has been off and remounted, which is a good thing. That's quite surprising. All right, get them cards in. Don't know what happened to this one up here. That wind had really whipped up, but there's not a lot of difference between those. You can barely tell. Right, well that was surprising. When you look at the average group sizes, of course it was windy, so we're not gonna have a particularly tight group, but when you look at the relative positions of the groups relative to the crosshairs, despite one high one here and down here, they're all in very much the same position. So potentially in calm conditions, we'd have shot much tighter groups. There can't really have been much more than a click of adjustment either way. So it certainly shows that they are built to a reasonable standard. The tolerances and repeatability of these mounts are pretty good.
it's certainly going to make life a bit easier when I'm swapping between the night vision and then the day scopes on the Catran. Of course, swapping scopes between rifles, you will have to, of course, do a zero check and there will almost certainly be some adjustment needed. But when you've got two scopes being used between one rifle, this Picatinny rail setup certainly has a degree of tolerance in there that really is quite surprising, especially given the cost. These West Hunter mounts were £17, and as I've said already, the little UTG Picatinny riser rail, that was only £16, so certainly not a lot of money at all. Quite surprising in terms of the repeatability of this. So I've got to say I'm quite surprised. I'm happy with those. I'm going to run these now for the foreseeable future. If there's any issues, if anything comes to light down the line, I'll be sure to tell you. So I think for the moment, guys, we'll call that good, and I'll catch you in the next one.